welcome to another great podcast this is satansa for today's podcast we have with us nitin gupta vp engineering india head of suki ai hello nitin welcome to analytics insights it's great to have you here thanks ata visa uh, so good to be here uh, thanks for having me thank you now i would like to ask you to give us a brief about the condition of the ai community in india's healthcare ecosystem sure happy to do that uh, i think before we you know uh, get to the condition of the ai community uh, let's take a step back uh, and first understand how healthcare technology solutions uh, primarily driven through ai ml can help the healthcare ecosystem so uh, india's healthcare sector has really been growing significantly over the last few years and it's expected to reach about 400 billion dollars by the end of 2022 uh, showcasing a cagr growth of about 22% uh, since 2016 uh, but uh, you know though the, the sector has been growing it, there are there are significant challenges which still remain uh, in increasing the coverage and quality of care in in healthcare so if you look at these challenges uh, i would say one of the major ones is, is that the, the in, in a diverse and vast country like ours uh, accessibility to remote areas is very very difficult secondly there is poor doctor to patient ratio of you know about one doctor to uh, you know about 1500 patients thirdly uh, there is lot of variability in care wherein you know there are no standard operating procedures or regulation or standardized you know skill set requirements amongst caregivers leading to lot of errors which happen when it comes to diagnosis fourthly uh, you know insurance penetration in india is pretty low uh, you know to only about 20% across our population right so uh, so as healthcare organizations are trying to solve for these challenges uh, they struggle to maintain a balance between three interlocking factors which are you know cost accessibility and quality so if they are working on you know enhancing the quality of care uh, there is uh, you know always a significant uh, and a severe impact on accessibility and cost right so so keeping all of this in mind i think there is strong belief that uh, deploying ai driven healthcare technology solutions we can really break this interlocking between cost accessibility and uh, quality wherein we can deliver high quality care with you know improved accessibility and reduced cost for example you know if you are able to say timely predict you know epidemic outbreaks you can deploy a solution at a much lower cost and uh, you know given it will be early detection also through remote monitoring and diagnostics you can continue to improve on the accessibility aspects uh, moreover uh, you know by analyzing more complete patient data in real time you can improve the quality of care through more accurate and personalized treatment plans so i, I think uh, we could you know see the benefits of you know deploying a lot of these uh, you know ai driven healthcare technology solutions uh, but uh, but but still challenges remain in terms of being able to do this ai led transformation i think one of the biggest challenges um, as we look at the ecosystem is that uh, you know there are several tech innovations though there are several tech innovations which are happening in the healthcare industry uh, you know according to a recent uh, report from nascom about 18% of all ai patents filed in india were in the healthcare domain uh, there is still an absence of ai community that specializes only in healthcare right so uh, so uh, you know this is essentially because you know there is lack of cohesive learning you know important and critical case studies or best practices uh, which can be adopted and learned from also there is you know dearth of you know skilled mentors who have you know a thorough understanding of both the healthcare domain and the technological capabilities so uh, you know and and also ai research you know needs to be specifically be focused in uh, uh, you know academic institutions you know which can really help the larger ecosystem uh, 
and, and so, so these are you know specific challenges uh, you know we see. Um, and, and what these lead to is you know uh, uh, first generation entrepreneurs really struggle um, with implementing solutions because there is always uh, you know hit and trial error they have to you know go through. Here at Suki, uh, you know, we are really trying to evaluate ways uh, we could work with some of the premier academic institutions in India in order to propel, you know, more or uh, AI-driven research in the healthcare domain, so that we can overcome this challenge uh, related to uh, just the AI community uh, focused on the healthcare ecosystem. Well, Nitin, that sounds really great. Now I'm interested to know about these questions is that why the data in healthcare setup is so isolated and the situation uh, situation seems more same more or less same in the developed markets also like as if in us or europe so what are the reasons behind this and do you think that data privacy has a role to play in it also yeah sure I think first of all, we need to understand that the healthcare industry is very, very complex um, as it, you know, it brings together different players such as, you know, hospitals, pharmaceuticals, pharma retail, medical devices, diagnostic centers, aftercare centers, insurance companies uh, together. Right? So, so, so there are multiple players, you know, which, uh, which, which are part of the ecosystem. And these organizations really operate under immense pressure due to low margins. Um, so though they can benefit significantly through collaboration and data sharing with each other, uh, there is very little focus on the same since they don't see immediate value, right? Uh, secondly, uh, you know, AI generated solutions and models tend to be very difficult to explain. And there is a lack of uh, understanding amongst the healthcare providers on what great things are really possible with respect to AI. Hence, they really find it difficult you know, to see value in sharing data, which can lead to uh, you know, much better AI-driven solutions. And, and as you mentioned, I think one of the other big reasons is really data privacy requirements. Um, healthcare is, is a very, very regulated domain, and it uh, needs to be since uh, the healthcare health information data of patients is protected and private to them. So uh, healthcare organizations really face a risk of uh, significant criminal charges, fines, and loss of reputation in case there is any breach of patient data. So there is very little, little motivation in their mind uh, you know, for, for really data sharing, right? And, and this is really true for you know, developed markets also. Data interoperability amongst uh, systems in these developed markets is also very minimal to non-existent. In, in the US specifically, uh, the healthcare system lags behind in technology adoption as compared to say other industries uh, there. Um, and uh, many solutions were really implemented years ago as on-premise solutions uh, where data interoperability was really not a top consideration. And as the industry there has gone through the digitization process, there hasn't been a focus on standardizing data governance practices uh, and really building out a framework for safe data exchange between uh, the systems. So what that has led to is, uh, you know, digital data being very, very much siloed. Right? So to give you an example, nurses in the US still spend a significant amount of time entering data from medical devices uh, into the electronic health record system, which is a system of record. So I, I think in order to overcome these challenges, uh, there is definitely a need to build strategic alliances and win-win partnerships between healthcare organizations and technology providers so that you know, they can come together uh, to realize the full potential of AI-driven solutions. Also, you know, as we are looking at government initiatives like Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission, uh, where there is uh, intent to really create a nationwide digital health infrastructure 
and create an open network for exchange of data between between providers and users, that should help with uh, data interoperability in general. Well, that was very insightful. Thanks for explaining it so well to me. Now, can you please give me a brief about the services that your company is contributing through AI and ML in the healthcare industry? Yeah, sure. Um, so, so Suki is really striving to solve for one of the major global problems in the healthcare industry, which is around uh, doctor and physician burnout. Doctors and healthcare professionals uh, face tremendous amount of administrative burden when it comes to tasks like clinical documentation, precisely entering orders of medications or lab tests, and in fact, engaging uh, with patients at various levels on an ongoing basis, uh, you know, they end up spending two hours uh, on these tasks for every hour spent on, on patient care. So here at Suki, our mission is to really make you know, healthcare technology assistive and invisible. Lift this administrative burden, which is you know significantly seen by doctors on a regular basis, so that they can focus on what they really like to do, which is to take care of patients. And in order to solve for this, I think we 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 really believe that voice is a more natural and fast way to interact with the system, and voice-enabled solutions can really help uh, doctors and clinicians uh, complete a lot of their tasks more quickly and easily. So in this regard, we've you know, developed our flagship AI-powered voice-enabled digital assistant, which leverages the latest in AI speech technologies and advanced natural language processing algorithms uh, in order to uh, really provide for uh, you know, various services. Doctors can really use a variety of voice commands to complete clinical documentation, uh, specific workflows, uh, personalize the voice enabled experience and really streamline uh, all the work they're doing on an ongoing basis. We've been also been able to really package, uh, you know, uh, our proprietary voice platform um, and, and being able to really brand that as a separate product called as uh, Suki speech platform, wherein we are working with other partners in the healthcare domain who wish to create best in, best in class voice experiences for their own solutions. So in this way, we can you know, stay true to our mission of making healthcare technology assistive and invisible through enablement, which is also happening uh, through our partner solutions. Well, that's very interesting. Now, I'm a little curious about what are some of the challenges that you must have faced while like during the growth of your company and how have you recovered them? Hey, that's a very good question. Uh, I, I think uh, you know as different startups go through uh, their journey and growth, uh, you know all of them you know face uh, several uh, you know, challenges, and and that's been true for us too. Uh, I think the first challenge uh, you know is is to has been to really understand the issues and pain points our users face on a regular basis. Um, so the, the 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 healthcare you know culture and, and then the and the clinicians uh, the kind of uh, you know workflows and uh, use cases uh, they go through on a regular basis that's very different from what say technologists do on a, on, a, on a daily basis so customer empathy and being able to really build a good understanding uh, of user workflows is very very critical so one way we've tried to address uh, uh, this uh, specific challenge is to really uh, have uh, practicing physicians be a core part of our team itself. So our VP of product, uh, Erin, um, she's actually a practicing general surgeon, right? So, so she, she has a very good understanding of the physician workflows um, and uh, you know, difficulties which are associated with uh, administrative tasks uh, really, really well. And her insight has been very, very valuable to help us build a product that not only addresses the real problems which clinicians face, uh, but also being able to really create an experience which they really enjoy, uh, right? Uh, another way we've tried to solve for this specific challenge is to um, really instill 
customer focus um, in all of our uh, team members. Um, uh, and by having them really being participate, participating on uh, customer calls and visits um, so that uh, they can directly uh, get a understanding of the customer issues and the concerns uh, which they have. One of the other challenges has been that uh, healthcare is really a conservative and slow moving industry. You know, that is somewhat at odds with uh, the startup culture, right? which which normally moves really, really fast, right? Um, and, uh, and, and, and really building a healthcare startup requires a team which not only understands the vision, um, but uh, is able to you know, get a longer term view of what we are building and trying to accomplish. Uh, the team also needs to have you know, a lot of patience to endure these uh, long sales cycles. So we continue to reinforce uh, these uh, with our team on an ongoing basis and uh, uh, really instill uh, you know, this kind of uh, behaviors uh, within the team. Uh, finally, I would say, I think another you know, key challenge has been around building a high performing and fun culture through the ups and downs of the startup life. You know, where the team is really empowered to deliver their best, uh, move with agility and are able to you know grow in their careers. In the end, uh, you know I, I feel it, it's all about the people, right? And and if they can really find a great environment, they can really thrive and accomplish anything. So uh, what we've done is really define uh, a set of company values and and we ensure that uh, starting from our hiring process to you know regular day to day work. Uh, uh, folks are able to really showcase these values on an ongoing basis. We also celebrate and reward folks who exemplify these values. So I think these are have been you know some challenges, uh, and you know and, and then you know, we've been uh, striving to you know, overcome these two specific things we have been doing within the organization, uh, and and this these these will continue to be areas of investment for us. So it seems that you people are doing a great job. And lastly, I want to ask you, what are your future plans with Suki? Right. Um, so I, I think we've been, uh, you know, um, in the business for about five years, and we really aspire to um, help every doctor, clinician, health system across the world with their administrative burden. We are. You know, really expanding uh, our user base and uh, and are very focused on growing our footprint. So, in order to do so, uh, you know, increasing the capabilities of our solutions is very very key. Um, so, uh, I think uh, the Suki Assistant will continue to expand its its uh, capabilities to include other administrative tasks outside of clinical documentation and 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 include things like billing, order management. Um, the assistant will continue to advance its AI capabilities, and will and then we will start to introduce a more ambient capabilities on the assistant, so that uh, the so that it can start to complete tasks without the need for the user to issue any specific commands and being able to uh, do this uh, do these tasks automatically. With the Suki speech platform, we have you know really massive opportunities in front of us in terms of you know enabling voice experiences through a variety of use cases which our partners deliver on. We'll continue to expand our partner base there and strive to build the Suki brand as analogous to voice in healthcare. That's that's where we want to be. Um, so I think uh, though our market is very much focused. To the to the U.S. market as of now, um, India is also you know turning out to be a very exciting market for us. Um, you know, with further further digitization in the healthcare uh, through you know the government initiatives like Ayushman Bharat, uh, we believe that uh, Suki will be able to add tremendous value in the lives of doctors and healthcare professionals here in India, and we expect India to be a significant market for us uh, two to three years down the line. Right, and in the in the meanwhile, uh, we will continue to expand um, our teams 
uh, here in India and continue to provide uh, a global, global platform to the tech talent here so that uh, they can solve for some of the greatest and most complex problems uh, currently facing the, uh, uh, the healthcare uh, market uh, uh, all over the world. That sounds great. I'm sure this is going to help all of our listeners too. Thank you, Nitin, for joining us today. It's been great talking to you. Thank you so much, Zatariza, for uh, you know having me. It was uh, great fun, and uh, you know I was uh, you know, really excited about uh, sharing uh, uh, a lot of this with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.